Hello children, good to see you again. Happy Tuesday and uh, a warm welcome to the Bible at bedtime. I've finished my puzzle. I'm very pleased. It was it was quite difficult, I have to say. I don't know if you can see how very intricate some of the pieces are, very strange shapes. And it was quite difficult to do, especially this building. This is um, an old coaching inn. It's about 1700, I think. The, the, it's called the Black Bull. Did you know that um, the reason these old pubs and inns were called things like the Black Bull or the White Swan or the Red Lion? They were called that because people couldn't read a long time ago, but they could read um, a signpost. And this signpost, as you can see, has a picture of a Black Bull on it. So people can go into the Black Bull and stay there the night if they've been walking. A lot of people do a lot of walking in this part of the world. Um, and of course, um, do you remember that uh, Jesus was born uh, not in an inn, but in a stable behind an inn? We had that story, didn't we? Because they, there was no room in the inn. And I suppose sometimes these inns get full up if there are lots of tourists. Um, the bit I enjoyed most of all, I think, in the puzzle uh, was finishing off all these people. There are lots and lots of people and they've all gathered around in the square. This is like the market square. There's a tree. And I don't know if you can see that they're singing. They're singing carols and, and praising God. And last time uh, David and I were in Howarth was two Christmases ago. Well, it was just after Christmas. We just went for a couple of nights. We stayed in an inn and um, we were having a, a hot chocolate on this steep hill I was telling you about with all the nice little shops. And a man, man came up to us from the public square and he said, do you know the Lord Jesus as your saviour? And we said yes and we had a little chat, which was lovely. And the reason he was uh, walking around Haworth and lots of others with him and asking people if they knew the Lord was because his own heart had been changed. And in today's story, we're going to see how Jesus can change us. Oh, that's a Makaton sign. He can change us on the inside. So that's today's story. I'm going to have to find a new puzzle to do, aren't I? I like that one. That was good. Okay, and so um, this story today is about Jesus' first miracle. And a miracle is an amazing thing that only God can do. And um, it tells us something about Jesus when he does one of his miracles. It's to make us think. And uh, so one day, Jesus and his disciples, those are the people following him, were invited to a wedding. Ooh, not many weddings going on at the moment, are there? And it was to be held in Cana. Cana was a little village in the hills of Galilee. While the guests were enjoying the feast, there was panic behind the scenes because there was no more wine and nothing to give the guests to drink. Jesus' mother was helping at the wedding and she beckoned to Jesus. Jesus, please do something, she begged him. If we can't get some more wine somehow, the feast will be spoiled and the bridegroom and his family disgraced. Now Jesus knew that his time at home doing as his mother wished was over. Now he must take his orders only from God and follow his plan. I must wait until the right time to act has come, he told her. See that you do everything my son tells you. Mary whispered to the servants, and that's good advice for anyone, isn't it? Always do what Jesus says. She was sure that Jesus would help their friends out of their difficulty and save them from disgrace. Now, everyone likes to wash before eating, but the Jews did much more than that. Because of their strict rules, they washed their hands over and over again. Well, that's quite relevant, isn't it? We're doing that, aren't we? And Jesus could see the row of huge water pots that had held the large quantity of water the guests needed. And now they stood empty. I'm just going to show you the water pots, the big fat clay pots. So those were full of water for the people to wash their hands in. Which is a good idea, isn't it? Jesus said, Fill up those jars. 
then draw the water from them to take to the guests. Well, the servants did just as Jesus had said. So that was good advice, wasn't it, from Mary? Must have felt strange, wasn't it? Pouring out water to serve to the guests. As they poured for each guest, they saw rich red wine filling the cups. Well, the chief guest took a satisfying drink and exclaimed to the bridegroom, you've left the best wine to last. He did not know where the wine had come from, but Jesus' disciples had watched all that had happened and they were full of wonder and awe at their new leader. They believed that he was someone very special. He would change the harsh, strict rules of the Jewish religion and bring God's power as well as God's love and joy wherever he went. So have a good look now at the picture. And you can see that they're pouring out beautiful wine. Jesus had changed the water into wine. And there's lots we can learn from this story, actually. But I think one of the chief things to take is that Jesus can change things. And he can change us. He can change our hearts. Because he's so powerful. So... A lovely story. Thank you very much for joining me for that story. And we're just going to say a little prayer now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ, who can change things. We thank you, Lord, that he changed water into wine and he can change our hearts so that we can love him. And we thank you that only he can do this. And we pray, Lord, that we will ask him to come into our lives and into our hearts and change us, Lord, and make us people who are saved by his grace. Amen. So thank you very much for listening. I'll see you again tomorrow. I wonder what my story is going to be tomorrow. And I won't have a puzzle anymore. So lo, lo, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you safe, and the Lord give you his peace till we meet again. Amen. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.